welcome to the ItalianCookingClass.com. Uh, my name is Giuseppe and what we're going to be doing here today is we're going to be cooking a, a lovely mushroom risotto. Now the mushroom risotto that um, I do is a little bit different because I don't use any stock and I just use plain button mushrooms but the way that we do it is um, we do we extract a maximum flavour out of the ingredient and maximise what we have and that way we don't need stock because with the stock what I find is with stock is basically what it is is, um, is protein that's reduced more and more and more and when it does um, reduce it gets quite gluggy and thick and it actually gets quite heavy to digest so using a water or using water um, it makes it a lot better because it is lighter and it's easy to, to digest and it doesn't adulterate the flavours any. We're just going to run through the basic ingredients now. There's only four ingredients, um, basic ingredients. It's very simple, and that's how we like to operate with the Italian cooking class because this way we connect really with the food and the cooking more so than the actual what you're cooking. You're concentrating on getting maximum flavours and dedicating a lot of love to the beautiful food, and that way it comes back to you. So, first is just the simple water that we have here. The water is um, just from the tap, you can use any water you like. It does have to be hot though, so that it doesn't craze the, the actual kernel when it's cooking because the kernel is actually being braised in the pan to incorporate all the flavours that are actually in the pan that we're going to braise off first and then you add the water and if the water is not hot it will actually microscopically craze the kernel and then what will happen is that the starch won't be released evenly and it will give you a different uh, texture um, to the kernel to the rice kernel it won't be as as, as, um, as even in flavour so it actually won't be as creamy but anyway that's with the rice as well then what we got is just some um, simply some onion and garlic. Uh, we come across you with some really nice, um, uh, beautiful zucchinis, um, some arbori rice. Um, now, depending if you use canaroli rice, it's even um, even uh, creamier still, and it has a a, um, a stabilised starch. It's aged a lot longer. But for the sake of the exercise, we use an arbori rice, which is good. It's a little bit more forgiving. And again, if you add the hot um, water or stock, you can use stock if you like folks, there's nothing wrong with that, I prefer water and it does make it a nice, um, a nicer creamier flavour. And then uh, we come across here to, to the, uh, the button mushrooms, um, just beautiful plain button mushrooms, fresh, we're going to cut them really thin and that way we can cook them off quite nicely and the importance of, of having a, um, a well cooked mushroom because it does extract the most flavour, that's the secret to it. You can use porcini mushrooms if you like. Again, that's a different flavour. I like to use the button mushrooms and maximise the flavour. Cook them so you get, because there's so much water content in mushrooms, they do need to be cooked well. That way, they actually, you extract most of the moisture. Then you start cooking the pulp, which has all the flavour, and it becomes more flavoursome as you cook it somewhat. So, we're going to get into it now. We're going to cut up the ingredients, and we'll be right back shortly. Thank you. Now, I'm just going to cut up some of the ingredients just to show you how I do it quickly and the size of it. That way you can see the technique in and exactly what I'm doing. Uh, it's very simple, it's not difficult, but that way just to give you a little bit of a hint um, on just um, a little bit easier. And, um, and then what I'll do is I'll cut them all up and then I'll come back and we'll put them all together. So first thing I'm going to do the onion, I mean you know how to peel an onion. Just take the ends off, then we cut it through the centre, it's just nice and easy, this way we can uh, just by cutting it in half, what you're actually doing is able to expose the layer of skin and it's just done really quickly and it's way and bang. Then we come across here and we just come through this way to dice the onion. It's always important to keep the fingers behind the blade. That way there's no chance of getting cut. It takes a bit of practice, but once you have it, it just makes a beautiful, beautiful way it's just so easy just so quick then we come across this way come across the the we come horizontally across the verticals that we've actually put through the actual onion itself and then we just come down this way and then we have the small little dice it's actually called brooms one and they're about three millimeters in size and we come down through the actual and then like that, nice and easy and simple, and that way, just nice and ready to go. See, there you go, it didn't take much at all, that did it. So, we'll just put that in there like that, make a bit of a mess. You know, my restaurant kitchen was really, really messy 
all the time, but boy, it was clean. And they reckon a messy kitchen's a good kitchen. And we used to get a lot of good accolades. It was uh, quite a lot of quite a lot of fun. The restaurant, beautiful. So I'll just clean this up over here. Oh, we can just put it over there for now. It doesn't really matter. So now we're going to do the actual. Um, we'll take a little bit of the onion off the actual board. That way we're not um, contaminating the ingredients. So if we take off the um, the onion, we take both ends off, sorry, the zucchini, we take both ends off the actual zucchini, we cut it straight down the centre, then we cut it down the centre again, which is a, makes it in quarters, lengthways. Then what we do is we come across and we cut it at about 5 or 6 mil sort of spaces. And this way we're getting a nice, nice piece of, of evenly spaced um, zucchini there, evenly cut. It's another zucchini there, another there. Now what we're doing is we're doing the mushroom, and it's just very simply, just thin, just some nice thin slices. Turn it down on the on the, on the flat part that you've cut, and come back across that way. And we'll have a good look at that. You can see how actually quite thin that is in compared to my finger. Look at that. In compared to the actual blade of the, um, see how close it is? The blade of the actual knife and everything. It's really quite thin. So, and it does make a difference. When you get a bit of practice, you can actually cut it quite rapidly and do it nice and easy. But if you can actually just do it nice and, and slowly, it does make it nice. You just get a nice sharp knife and just come down through that way just like that nice and, and simply and slowly and back that way as well now then that's the mushrooms I'll put them in here it is important to always sharpen your knives before and after you actually cut things so just a nice forward downward blade it's um, motion with the blade I'm actually going to be doing some, some sharpening techniques as well there's some videos with that, just to, it goes into some detail, but just for the sake of the exercise, just do it, that's why I had it there on the side. And now we're going to do the, the, the garlic. Now the garlic is something that I, that I cut thin, and I add it at the end of the actual, um, the dish, just before I, I you know, probably a couple of minutes towards the end of it, before it's completed its cook time. Now the reason for that is, is because it doesn't actually, overcook the garlic and, and burn and tighten the actual dish itself. So we keep it nice and, and, and soft and it does cook beautifully as well and it does flavour with a light hint of garlic. I've got a bit there, I'm not going to be using it all, but what we do here as well is just some really thin slices. See I didn't even take all the skin off on that one but it's come off now, so there you go. As you can see they're just really really thin, paper thin slices. Not sure you can see that there. And that's wonderful there and we'll do the same over here. Just hold the garlic down that way. And that is just super thin. It's like the mushrooms. Even even um, even thinner. Obviously because it has it's a it's a thicker pulp, you're actually able to cut it a lot thinner. There we go. And we'll just put that in a little container here, ready to roll. And we can add all that together. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut all the ingredients, get them all ready, I'll have them all out of the table and then we'll start cooking. Thank you very much. We've, um, we've cut all these ingredients here before you, uh, as you can see. And what we've got here again is the garlic, uh, we have the oil, um, which is um, in the recipe, but I didn't show you because that was an, an, just another ingredient, not a base ingredient, but an ingredient. So we've got four tablespoons of olive oil, we've got two squashed cut, uh, cups of mushrooms, we've got a whole brown onion which has been diced, we've got four tea, small uh, little uh, coffee cups of uh, butter rice, we've got three quarters of a cup of parmigiano, and we've got two large zucchinis here diced ready to go and one clove of garlic. Um, also here we have some salt, just some salt which is what we use often because salt's really important to cook with it does extract the flavour of ingredients by drawing the moisture out of it so it's very important now we're going to just uh, go through the process we're um, going to heat this up, we're going to add the oil as soon as it gets uh, hot there 
and then first thing is that we're going to do is we're going to braise the um, the onions in the oil so it fuses the oil with the onion flavour. Then we'll add the zucchinis and we'll cook them off a little bit and then we'll add the mushrooms. Here we go, we're just going to put the oil in there now. We'll get that nice and hot. I'll get a wooden spoon. With salt, what actually happens with the salt, folks, is that the actual salt is, is a flavour extractor, it's not a flavour enhancer because um, it doesn't add flavour to it, it actually brings the flavour out of the ingredient. Now, again it does that by drawing moisture out from the centre of the ingredient to the surface and bringing more flavour that way. Um, just to find an example, uh, prosciutto or um, salt air cured uh, hams and things like that, they're actually raw then they're salted and what happens is that the flavour gets drawn to the surface and then the air dries the actual um, moisture of the ingredient and then it becomes dry but still having lots of flavour. Um, so that's what you're actually doing is drawing the flavour from the inside of the ingredient to the surface and what has most of the flavour? It's the inside, the heart of the actual ingredient. So now we'll just go back down here where um, we're going to just cook this off nice as you can see. We're just going to season a little bit. It is important to season each and every ingredient. That way the flavours are individual and they're not drawing on each other's seasoning. So if you season everything a little bit, what happens is that all the flavours are the right seasoning and then the, you get a beautiful flavour in the complete dish. Okay, as you can see here, it's not totally cooked, but that's okay because it's still going to keep cooking in the pan, even though we had other ingredients. So what we're going to do, I did say the mushrooms first, but what we'll do is we'll add the zucchinis and we'll season them a little bit as well also. Now, the reason for adding the zucchinis is so that the zucchini themselves have more room to sit on the surface of the pan and that is the hottest part of the pan of course is the surface itself so back down here you'll see how it actually is able to have more surface contact with the surface of the zucchini and that way it will cook nicely and get a little bit of, of, um, of charring, well not charring but nice little browning on, on the zucchini surface as well. You don't have to keep stirring everything fast because when you do stir what happens is you allow the heat to escape and it doesn't actually give the surface enough time to actually stick with the heat and cook. So allowing it to sit a little bit is a good thing. There is definitely nothing wrong with that. Okay, as you can see it's browned off a little bit more. Now what happens is too, as I was mentioning earlier, by the way I just want to um, correct something. I mentioned about 6mm size um, spaces when I was cutting the zucchini. It's actually about 10 to 12 millimeters. It's double the size, it's about a centimeter space. So when, when you're actually continually stirring the zucchini, you're actually um, and, and making them steam in a sense because you're not allowing again the surface to sit on the hot pan. You can see the onions brown, but what we're going to do now is we're going to add the mushrooms to that and we'll season that as well. Now the idea of adding the mushrooms now is because it's going to release a lot of moisture so everything inside the pan will cool down and get some moisture from the actual mushrooms Therefore, they will stop cooking until all the moisture is gone from the pan and then everything starts cooking again along with the mushrooms. Now, you will have noticed the onion was somewhat browner than what it was when we first added the zucchini, of course. 
and that's okay. It's going to flavour the um, the dish a bit more, which is something that I particularly like. It works really well. Now, if you didn't want to do that, what you could actually do is is um, add the onion after the zucchini and brown the zucchini first more. The reason why I didn't is because I like the zucchini to retain a bit more texture. So that's the main reason. A lot of steam coming up here. We're cooking with steam, folks. Electricity, I should say, guys. But... So, this is, you can see down here now, it's, the heat is quite, quite heavy. Sorry, quite high. The heat is quite high here. And we are now stirring it because we do want to um, get that mushroom on the bottom there. You can see the bottom of the pan there has got some, some nice brown flavours from the caramelisation of the onion. We're actually going to be using some wine to deglaze the pan and incorporate those flavours into the dish itself. I'm actually going to add a little bit more olive oil here. Because it's a little bit dry and that's okay to add a bit more oil. I said four tablespoons. But always it's good to keep some on the side because basically what you need to do is have it available in case it dries. Okay, as you can see everything's a lot browner here now. Um, so what we're going to do is now we're going to add the risotto um, and, and combine all those flavours in and we're going to braise the kernel. So we're going to add the rice, it becomes a risotto, the riso. We're going to add the riso, the rice to the actual flavours. This way, what's going to happen now is that the rice will take on all those flavours. So therefore you don't have to add the stock to give it an extra flavour. It'll take on all those flavours. It'll fry with the oil that's there. It'll combine it and absorb all those flavours around the kernel. And then when we add the water, where does the water come in from? That's right, it comes from the outside in. It draws the flavours from the outside into the middle of the kernel. Now, we know that the inside of the, of the ingredient has a made flavour. But in this instant, the actual flavour is coming from the outside in because we've actually coated it so well that then all those flavours will be drawn in the centre and the rice will be just beautiful. And just as we were cooking here, uh, my partner Maria said, Oh, it tastes, it smells, sorry, fantastic. So, and it really does, ladies and gentlemen. It's a wonderful, wonderful dish. So now we're going to add the rice, just straight in there like that. We'll season that as well, son. Everything has good seasoning, and it, it's okay to over season a little bit, not too much. The only reason why is because we're going to add the water to it. The water will now, because it's not salted and not seasoned, it's going to draw on those flavours as well. So that in itself will need some flavouring. So with the seasoning of all the ingredients in here, the water will combine with all these and it'll mellow out the actual flavours. So it'll be just wonderful. You can see that there. We're stirring it because what we want to do is, as we're stirring it, we want the kernel to braise evenly all over. I mean, they, they do say that we should stir it up though anyway. That's with the water in it. But that's another thing which I'll go over after I've added the water. Now, the thing is that we do need to keep that stirring nicely. Okay, as you can see now, the actual kernel, I'm not sure how good you can see that if you zoom right in there. You'll see that um, the kernel is quite braised, it's actually a little bit brown. And um, so we've got an even, and back in the pan here you can see how, um, how, how we've actually got some, some consistent colour in there. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to add a bit of wine just to deglaze the pan. That's wonderful. And that's all evaporated. So we can see that there like that. Beautiful. The rice is nice. And now we're going to add the water. The water has been heating up over there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the water and I'm just going to let it sit. I know that they say you've got to stir it up, but that's not the case. You can let it sit for about 8 to 10 minutes. And then once you, you stir it, once you stir it the first time, about uh, after 8 to 10 minutes, then you do need to stir it. Now the reason why it doesn't have to be stirred is because it is, so you just cover it like that as you can see, just cover it. That will turn the heat down to a good temperature where it can just cook away nicely. Just cover it. That water will be absorbed. Because the kernel is so 
and cooked. It's, it is going to take some time for it to cook, of course, so it can sit with the water in there covering it for about, you know, eight to ten minutes, you know, uh, ten minutes around, and at that point it's starting to really cook, so you want to make sure that it does cook even at that point. That's why it is important for the next six to eight minutes to start stirring at that point, and then for the next six to eight minutes keep stirring because that way the actual kernel does cook evenly. As you can see folks, we've added um, some more water to it just to um, give it some more fluid to cook in because it did actually dry up some of its hot water that we added of course. And we are going to give it a final cook. It's not far from being done. I can actually add the garlic in now. I could have added it in with the actual, when I was doing frying off the last bit before I added the water, but I like to put it in now. You can put it in when you're frying it, but just this way it's not too intense, the garlic. It's just a, a nice, a nice flavour. Okay, folks, so um, it's nearly done. What we're going to do is we're just going to taste it to see the texture, what it's like, and obviously the flavour, and then we'll add the parmigiano, and then we'll, we're just about to serve it up. So we'll come over this, we'll get a spoon here, and we'll um, see how it's sort of sticking to the bottom. Because it's just about done, all the moisture's right. Mmm, very hot, very nice. We can actually cook another two minutes. Mmm. We've got a bit more water. There we go. And that will be that will just do it beautifully. If you come in close you can actually see how it's just a little bit uncooked. The rice kernel is actually still a bit um, a bit opaque, not so translucent translucent. We want it to be more translucent. It's still a bit white in colour, so that's why you can tell that it needs a bit more cooking. It hasn't been quite 18 minutes but it will be very soon. But at this point we can we can actually throw in the parmigiano anyway so we'll throw that in there like that. We'll just mix that through beautifully. And we can see that nicely. And you know what? We'll serve that up because while it's sitting there, it's still going to cook in its own temperature. It's a nice consistency. Risotto, folks, risotto does not have to be thick and set. It does need to be fluid and runny and sit flat in a plate. That is a traditional Italian risotto, not hard and set. So we'll just serve this up. Okay, folks, um, now we've, we've actually served it up and you can have a look at this beautiful um, risotto. What we've actually done is just put a bit of shaved um, parmigiano on top of it, as well as some olive oil al crudo, which is olive oil nice and fresh and um, extra virgin. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a taste of this beautiful, wonderful, fabulous, creamy, Wonderful flavour, some mushrooms, zucchini, cheese. This is a wonderful dish. It was one of my best sellers in the restaurant. You can put some roasted red cap skin on there, or some blue vein cheese if you like, all sorts of things. But I like it like this, and the roasted red cap skin really works well with it. But mmm, buonissimo. E proprio al dente. It's perfectly cooked. It has a beautiful mushroom flavour that comes through with some hint of cheese, a dash of garlic, and the oil. The olive oil is really, really flavoursome and comes through as an olive hit, which you can add olives to it if you like. But again, it's all a combination of those bitter flavours. And excuse me, sorry. Mmm. When you bite into a pizza zucchini, it just bursts into your mouth. Folks, excuse me, it's great. Thank you for joining the
ItalianCookingClass.com. Buon appetito e arrivederci. So, uh, thank you folks. I just wanted to mention on that um, on the risotto there, that was the mushroom risotto, but that is a super gluten-free uh, combination of ingredients there, as most of you probably know. Though if you want to make, if you had lactose intolerance, um, also don't use the cheese, and it's just a beautiful, healthy, super duper, wonderful, flavoursome dish. That was actually quite a staple dish for um, celiacs in our uh, restaurant, and you know people that have lactose intolerance uh, things as well. So. Again, it's just a wonderful dish, full of flavour, very simple, nothing too difficult about it at all. And you can see, we've just finished it all. <laughs> Sorry, that was another break. <laughs> but really nice and wonderful. Again, thank you so much for taking time to view this uh, video at the ItalianCookingClass.com. Buon appetito e arrivederci. Grazie.